It's some 10 minutes after 7, and our live coach, Amos Kevin Adan, has joined us for a conversation uh, ahead of Mother's Day on Sunday. This is really, really important, so you've got to listen and share. And your comments and your questions are very much welcome here on the show. So, first of all, good morning to you. Good morning, Mama V. Good, good morning. morning. How are you? Bro, good morning. Great. Nice having you today. Yeah. <laughs> I hope that we have a nice conversation. I, I should have I've always been looking for that one. Yeah. I should have made it like an all-men affair all men. on a women's no, no, conversation no. so that we see how you skew it. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, for example, she just asked me, the weekend is Mother's Day on Sunday. Uh -huh. yeah, Sunday. Do I know? I say I don't. Mothering Sunday. <laughs> yeah. I remember my son's birthday. But he doesn't I don't remember, remember that. Day. Yeah. Okay. So I've been trying to been give him though. a few, <laughs> yeah, a few tips. Some what tips. he should do for Please. his wife. That helps. Yeah. So Very I should, important. So I should cook. Um, cook. It's not cooking. Breakfast is not as like long cooking. As, as long as she would like the taste. Oh, I it's mean, not my breakfast. I think any woman should love when that. When it's done okay. that way, British even breakfast. if it doesn't British taste breakfast. nice, it is nice. Fantastic. Yeah. So we are clapping for Ro now. I pray he does it. I pray he Looking does it. Looking forward to I'll hearing try. some testimony from the wife. Charlie, Amen. Are, we, are we getting feedback? Is there a feedback loop I, for, from the wife? Yeah, I have to try and get Please that. Please do. I will. So right. we can... Give more endorsements. Yeah, people, sure. people are counseling me now. <laughs> <laughs> well, like. How was your trip in Ako to Akosomo? Hey, Akosomo was a blast. Testimonies are flowing out of it. Um, yeah. The couples are sharing how that has been beneficial. They're actually asking for another one. So we're already in discussion. Okay. Looking at July, hopefully, we'll be able mm. to put together something. Okay. For the same set and maybe four additional set mm. of couples we All don't right. want to make it too big okay so i hope that my my viewers also benefited very much from this experience yeah. hopefully <laughs> <laughs> so we're talking headship and submission yeah mm. how would you start this whole conversation for us what i will start off by saying is that submission is not blind obedience so for a husband who is looking forward to a wife becoming submissive he must not ever think it's going to be blind obedience. That means that there will be times of disagreement, even though the woman still submits to you as the head of the home. Secondly, I want to submit to our viewers that headship does not connote control. It does not connote subjugation of the other party. It does not connote someone is in servitude of you. And unlike what we see today, people who say that they are heads of home are literally strangulating their spouses, choking them to death. And that's not headship. Mm. Because the woman wasn't taken from the crown of your head to, con to sit on top of you. Neither was she taken from the sole of your feet that you trample her underfoot. She was taken from your rib carriage so that she can be embraced with warmth and love and treated as equal. Mm. She wasn't taken from the dust, at least from the creation story. She was taken from the man. So the concept of headship means that you are in leadership. So she was a derivative from you and was part of you, and therefore you cannot mistreat her. Mm. And any mistreatment of the woman is not headship. It's something other than headship. Do, do you feel, because you counsel a lot, a lot, a lot of people, do you feel that women who are successful, these days everybody is working, do you feel that we're submissive? Some are, others are not. The well-endowed, well-accomplished, known, have it all, and sometimes have a, have a posture of know it all. So even when they, in the relationship? Even in the relationship. So when they go into the partnership, as spouses, instead of complementing each other, they are competing with each other. So they're competing with the men. And the mantra is what men can do, women can do, and even do it better. When you start off with a man in that fashion, it's not helpful for you. Because rivalry is set in motion. But spouses are not supposed to be rivals. They're supposed to be complementary towards each other. Mm. So there's a need for a clarion call to be launched to our women folk to understand that you are not competing with your spouse. 
Neither are you competing with your significant man in your life. That is if you are not yet married and you are in a relationship. Because mm. I can see that quite a number of people are in relationships that are not necessarily consummated into marriage. And they need to start off well, knowing that we are working together. For instance, I had a case where the lady wanted to do her PhD and the husband looked at her and said, over my dead body, what will I account for a man saying this? And many of those men, they are insecure. They are insecure. And they think that when the woman has these um, accomplishments added to her repertoire, it's going to be, be disadvantageous to him as a man. Mm. But I tell them it's not going to be. <laughs> it's going to work in your interest. Because if you're working as complementary, the woman will augment you. And when you exit your home and come into the public, public arena, everybody sees you, but they also see the projection of your wife in you. And vice versa. Mm. You see? Projection of your wife in yes, you. Yes, in you. Yeah. Because the, the treatment of you can affect your work rate, can affect your productivity. So there's a tie-in component of productivity and healthy relationships. Mm. There's, a, there's a, another angle to this conversation that we will not... Row house, uh, okay. Yeah, so mm. now that you have him, all <laughs> the things you're asking my, me... My, 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 my thing is, for example, um, we see all the the big ladies mm. around but even I put myself in the same position um, you, your work is demanding well you have kids yeah. but if I if a woman is in reverse my position mm. um, you you get to be called sometimes erratically or randomly mm. to come and work or maybe you have some work you have to stay over and do some and you are in that position because that's your career or that's mm. what you're doing um, at what point do we have to say maybe then the other, because me, for example, I'm a female and the other is a male, then it's the male who has to do a lot more of the compromises so that you tend to have a certain healthy relationship. You see, because the, then the other side of the roles have changed, not necessarily the home roles or the relationship yeah. roles, but the aesthetic roles in terms of how you work, mm. the roles you play in society. You see, the roles in our marriages ought not be static. They have to be dynamic. And given the occasion, we become flexible to reflect the changing trends around us because we, we consider each other carefully before we make a choice or take a decision. So where it is that the man needs to bend a little backwards to be able to connect with the spouse. He should do so generously. Do, do, you prompt, do you prompt the man? I mean, who well, where it the is that there's a need to prompt him, you should. I mean, that's where communication is important. And much more conversations are very important. You see, communication tends to connote a, a certain formality, certain structured line of thought. Hmm. But conversations tend to be very informal, casual you know, without any artifice around it. And that's why conversations predisposes us to being vulnerable. It ever heard that there are some men that <laughs> no matter what Ro you was say, his head. I need to hear once, what he has in his head. <laughs> once you haven't said exactly what you want to say, they don't get you. So if I'm complaining to you about the fact that now work volume is too much mm. and the children and, you know, everything, I'm saturated, you're supposed to get it. And then say that, oh, what if I do this? Or what if we do it this way? There are some men who would never think that way. You see, the, what we need to help our men folk is, they, you see, men tend to get engrossed in one thing at a time. They are not as multitasking as women. He may have the skill to do multitasking, but that's for certain specific things. Maybe his vocation, he's on Facebook, he's checking his WhatsApp, uh, he's listening to s some music. Hmm. That's fine. But when it comes to his relationship with his wife, he's one project at a time. Okay, so there's a need for us to help our husbands or males, significant males in our lives, to be a little more observant of the changing times. Where it is that they become oblivious of the change, mm -hmm. they won't respond to the change. Mm -hmm. And that can hurt the woman. So then many women will flare up in tantrums. And then also become demanding. And that's the last thing you want to do it to a man. To be demanding, overbearing on him with a particular thing. That but why should it al always be that we have to 
uh, be submissive to whatever the demands of the man is. No, because it shouldn't always be. That's why I said that. Not it's, necessarily it's not submissive, but always be a, more, a lot more receptive. Mm. It shouldn't always be. I mean, if the man bounces off something to you and you have contrary view, you should be able to share it respectfully, though. But where it is that you scream and yell at him, retorting to what he has said, then that's not helpful because clearly you're going to put him in a position to become defensive mm. and worse or become abrasive because men tend to have more of the testosterone. So the, the testosterone... Why should it always be about men, etc.? Oh, no, can, it's can not men men It's more like you're considering... <laughs> yeah. Because 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 His a man mood and because, yeah. you know you're you trying to, to talk to you him have to at, be a, at a okay, particular Okay, let me ask time. you this. Let me ask you. you see, somebody, let me say this. Somebody, let me say this before you. You see, for a man, when you start giving him attention, when he does not need attention, he becomes suspicious of your attention. So, <laughs> for many men, that has become an exploitative tool. Women have used. Oh, you know, she starts lo looking extra nice, more caring, and usually friendly. Then the man takes a posture. Mm -hmm. She's up to well, something. She's up to something. Mm. <laughs> so let's let's not use that because when you use that tool, the man then will think, "Oh, I've seen this before." Mm. So it won't even scratch him, let alone get his response. Now I can hear of. Yeah, uh, I have two questions, okay. though, but let me ask uh, just in response to what you said about how uh, we need to be very much empathizing with what the usual man straight is, etc. But let's say somebody's married to somebody like Serena Williams. That's a high testosterone level, really? I think, at some level. <laughs> Are so you imagining she's it? Into sports. <laughs> yeah. Because of what she does. Because she's, yeah, because she, of what she does. Yeah, yeah, I mean, definitely. But at, at what point do you have to say, <laughs> well, because you, you are that abrasive, you're strong, etc., and so you, you have to be the one who would have the high emotions and yours would have to be a lot more considered. I hope that she won't get into a situation where she gets into a union with a person who is just like her. Ah, so she should go and take a mumu. <laughs> not, <laughs> not a mumu as such. Um, but you see, opposites tend to attract. Yeah. When you look at relational therapy, you will notice that the opposites tend to attract. Because everybody wants to avoid someone who is like them. Because they can always predict you. Because well, then you guys are competing. A you're lot always more. going to compete mm -hmm. because your emotions are always, always at the same level. So such a woman, I mean, the man has to know the fabric of the woman he's living with and how to respond best to her changing moods. Whatever it is, she may show a lot of muscle, a lot of energy, a lot of character and all that. But she's still a woman. And there's something about women which makes them distinct from the man. And you can't take it away from women. So there's a need for men to dwell with these women in understanding. There's an interesting question on WhatsApp. Okay. Mama, we ask him who is a woman. That's from <laughs> Mark. Jamibi <laughs> Jasikan <laughs> singing. Who is a woman? Well, I mean, when you go to the delivery ward, you would see that some children are born and they are defined as male and female. Okay. But woman uh, has more... Uh, characteristics than that of that child. It's like you say a man. Being a man is connoting of responsibility and it's a choice you make. So being a woman is also a choice. There are girls out there, but girls don't marry. Women are the ones who marry. So you, you come to a point where you see that you're matured. There are certain features that show. I can't go into all that. You know it. I mean, the person who sent the message knows that. So he when can we look say, at me. When we say, yes, you can look <laughs> at Mama V. Mama V is a woman right there. So you normally hear the word womanhood. Mm. Why are we saying that? Because there are certain characteristics that are noticeable in a person in order for her to be described as a woman. So you notice that the young men who are effeminate also are showing those traits. So it is easy for you to confuse them to be women when it is that they are males that are either trans, you know, or something else. That's yeah. another realm. That's another yeah. realm. Yeah. <laughs> taking us going into another we are not going there. jurisdiction. Yeah. That's why I don't want to go there. Yeah. So uh, there are certain features that clearly shows that this person is a woman. And I mean, you can't miss them. And when you see a man to you, you see, no mm. matter how plump he is or fleshy the body is, 
you will still notice that this is a man. Okay. Yeah. So Mark sends that message from Jessica. I have a feeling there's a follow-up. So now he's explained. Okay. Come again. He can bring it. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ro, you said he mm. had two questions. Yes, the yeah. second one. The other one is, is about the, the thing about the careers and, and, and the roles and how they are reversed, et cetera. Mm. And then how perhaps, or how deep should the man be empathizing when it is that, let's say, you're married to someone like the Chief Justice. But at the time that you married somebody like her, she wasn't the Chief Justice. Yeah. She may have been the ordinary woman you married. Yeah. And the person has been ambitious, risen through the ranks. At what point do you have to change your behavior or your, your make sure that your receptacles are very much uh, aware that whoever I'm living with or I'm moving with is changing and all I also need to change? Well, generally, every one of us should appreciate that every new level introduces new devils. Hmm? Every new level, level introduces new devils. New devils. Now, that means that the demands will be different. The expectations will be higher. Um, the kind of sacrifices that will be required will be more intense. Yeah. Now, failing to recognize that change is in itself a disincentive to you as the man. And you'll be frustrated. You'll be fighting shadows that do not exist. So there's a need for the man first to, and I agree that the promotion of the spouse necessarily come with certain things that will require quick adjustment and creativity. And then since I said that our rules are not static but ought to be dynamic, there's the need for us where the, there must be a reversal of rules, we should do so. It is for our mutual good. How easy is it for a man to adjust <laughs> to new trends? Yeah. It, shouldn't be, so it, should, it shouldn't be difficult ordinarily, but some make a big issue out of it, I know. Yeah, they can't make a big issue. And they justify to make big issues. They issue. are not justified. Okay. Because, for instance, if, let, let's take it, for instance, a woman who is a pastor, and the husband is not a pastor. You could see that the woman will have a, a lot of demands in terms of invitation to speak here and speak mm -hmm. there. And many men find it difficult to adjust in such situations for their spouses. But how come the women do it so easily? It's part of socialization, we, we may agree. It's also for women, they are easy to adapt. Women tend to be highly um, adaptive than males. We yes, males, special, we males tend to adapt when it is that it is playing to our advantage. When it's convenient for us. Convenient, that's the advantage. Because if it's not convenient for you, I mean, why should I adapt? Mm. You see? So our, adaptive, our, our ability to adapt is important in such a situation. And there are many men out there now who are having such dynamic uh, scenarios that you created with the Chief Justice play now because a lot more women are becoming more successful. Mm -hmm. They are gaining more mileage than the men. And so you agree greater. that a lot, a lot more professional women are suffering, if oh, you yes. like. They're going Qu through a lot. Quite a number are suffering in silence uh, from what I have encountered. They are suffering in silence. And oftentimes, it's, it's the mundane things, the small things. And you see, when it comes to relationships, the small things are the big things. Mm -hmm. And so the very little things that you ignore, the things that you take for granted, those are the things that come back to eat the relationship and destroys and compromises the health. So what it does then is it throws you out of your commitment, and then you begin to commit elsewhere by using displacement. You displace your energies from thus to that. Mm -hmm. And that's not helpful because you find out that you are going after a mirage in the long run. Mm. So back to the, the, the little issue of how do you prompt the man to be aware of your current situation and how Conversations it's very are important. challenging. Conversations are important. For men, it's not about emotions. Unfortunately, many women will use tears Quite a number of men are suspicious of tears. And so once you start shedding tears, they are, they are defensive, if not apprehensive. Mm. So they are not going to respond. Reasonability is how to get the man's attention. Sound right, use the facts, appeal to his logical 
thoughts. Let him see that you need help. Okay. You need him to come and be more considerate of you. That helps men to reposition themselves. Mm. But unfortunately, there's a new breed of women who are using aggression. But aggression never works to the woman's advantage. Never, ever. Why shouldn't a woman be aggressive? You see, the if aggression... If the man can be, the woman too can. Well, once they deploy the tool of aggression, the man becomes even more aggressive. Well, it depends on which type of man. Well, there are some men even who... the most quietest of men can show this volcanic eruption. I agree. That you haven't seen before. I agree. Really? Yeah. I have sat with women who got married to my men who were considered to be very quiet, <laughs> redrawn. Everybody knows him to be very civilized, polite, courteous man. And then when they implode <laughs> and explode, it's horrible. Yeah. You ask yourself, where has this monster been all this while? <laughs> and it was latent in them. Mm. Uh, there's a gentleman, analyst from Takwa, he wants us to analyze this issue. <laughs> he says, please, I want to know how the world will turn into if all the men we have in this world have their bosses to be women. It uh, won't do anything. <laughs> I've worked with some women bosses. It, won't, yes. it <laughs> won't do anything. I mean, nothing will happen. It's just going to be a dynamic situation that has emerged, and we've got to live with that reality. Mm. A lot more women are going to be bosses, and for me, sitting here as a father of two daughters, I won't find any problem. If you're a man and you think that the success of women necessarily means the failure of men, then you're in big trouble. Mm. Daniel in Suedro says, uh, good morning to you all. We say good morning back. Good morning. My fiance claims she loves me too much, mm -hmm. that she doesn't object to anything I do or say, even uh, if she's not comfortable. My problem is, is that she later complains to friends about my shortfalls. Please, can this be submission? Uh, it's a red flag that you need to deal with. You've got to let her be vocal. Let her articulate her views. Don't let her suppress her views. Views are individually oriented, and people should be allowed. But why is she doing that? Is it, is well, it some, just so he see, can see that that's a very submissive nice, woman? Yeah, you want to play the nice card. You don't want to be ruffling the feathers, mm. rock the boat, be that woman. And many of them, they start showing these, uh, you know... <laughs> other side of them mm. when they marry and then the guys get frustrated you are not like this how come you <laughs> become like this and then they're going to fight it you know so she should be encouraged to speak out mm. and share her views okay this one says uh, in a relationship how deep should a man fall in love with what uh, are the things he shouldn't do just for love okay in terms of helping the lady you are here so uh, how well when Deep you are, should when, you fall and how far should you go? When it is that you are doing acts of generosity, it should be acts of generosity, not anything you're looking for returns. Unfortunately, the sons of Adam tend to want to invest and then get some <laughs> accruals from it, and that's not helpful. We want to read. <laughs> and then the other thing is, instead of falling in love, once you fall into love, uh, try and grow the love. Nurture it. Let it grow naturally. Don't accelerate the pace of the love. Because sometimes we hastily get into love situations and we do many things. We get carried away, head and heels over. Mm. And we do all kinds of stuff only to discover that after all we're not in love. And then it was just an emotional flight. Mm. And when the flight settles, reality dawns on you. Mm. We're going to be merging this conversation uh, with this other, it's a whole <laughs> topic on its own. Yeah. Who owns the body of the man the and body the woman? Of the man yeah. and the woman. <laughs> but let me, let me read this message from uh, Frank in Kibi. Okay. Frank says, Mamavi, I strongly <laughs> believe, irrespective of all the guidelines and directives from a relationship expert, success dwells on understanding and sacrifices. If mm -hmm. you throw away these two ingredients in your relationship or marriage, you will invite problems. Okay, what is Mr. Anand's view That's on That's fantastic. This? I think it is on point. Mm -hmm. um, sacrifice is required at every given turn in the relational life. You have to sacrifice. When your wife delivers, you have to do more sacrifices. Um, you were two in the room. Now you have a third per mm -hmm. person. Some don't have a court, so the baby will have to sleep with the mom and he's on the floor. It's a form of sacrifice. Um, you come late, but the baby screams. You know, previously my first daughter, she would just scream, 
the mother's name, mommy, mommy. But then she changed at age two. <laughs> she screamed, daddy. <laughs> then I'll prompt my wife. Then she goes like, she mentioned your name. <laughs> So I have to, you know, <laughs> and then you'd be amazed. A child who was sleeping on the bed would say, Daddy, I'll sleep at your back. <laughs> and I have to, you know, condescend. <laughs> Carry her behind and then walk around for a while. You're putting her down and go, <gasps> then she shake. <laughs> So well, there's a need for that. Sure. The conversation is also on <laughs> Facebook, so we're going to be picking uh, some of your messages there. But this one from... Uh, Hey, Mark, Mark again, huh? Okay. Mark asks about who is a woman. Mm. So, and then Mark comes back and says, eh, so in this case, a woman is not about the physical appearance, but rather the character. Oh, th I mean, the features are all part of it. Where are you going, Mark? <laughs> <laughs> this Mark. is where we end it. <laughs> Mark, okay, let's go are to you okay with that <laughs> one? He's taking us to another level. So let's yeah. go on to Facebook. <laughs> let's go to Facebook, and then we'll come back and talk all about right. who owns the body who of the woman. The body, yes. uh, so if the woman takes care of everything at home, school fees, bills, feeding, accommodation, etc., does it make her the head of the house? Uh, at what point can the role of the man and the woman be compromised? And that's what we've put on Facebook. Uh, let's mm. see okay. what you are saying right there with your comments. Uh, so uh, Kukwa says, when the woman takes responsibilities of the husband, she automatically becomes the head. <laughs> and if, for instance, the man loses his job, uh, if the man loses his job, dear, he go cook and clean and sometimes <laughs> insulted. <laughs> The reality of today's world, Lord have mercy. Well Tobias well says, to me, there is no head or tail in marriage. It is a partnership of equal persons who complement each other by compromising individual interest for a greater good. Bonzi Benjamin, uh, not po talking politics today, says, uh, <laughs> is when the woman takes over the financial responsibility of the money. Uh, of the family. Uh, that's when that's when you become the head, I guess. <laughs> uh, Park Vesia Fum says, it makes her the head. The head is responsible for all these tasks. Uh, Nana Owusu says, yes. Chenebua James says, nice. Okay, so uh, your comments on... Well, I think that um, it's important to understand that headship is also shared responsibility, shared leadership. Mm. So any man who really knows he's the head knows that Ordinarily, our heads rest on a neck. So if a lady is the neck that holds the head, it makes a world of difference. You are careful what you do with your neck. Mm. You know, <laughs> no matter how strong your head is, if your neck is not in good position, your head will have trouble. So there's a need for we the men or the males who have taken upon ourselves the call, the duty of being heads at home to understand that headship is also shared. Yeah, it's not one directional, mm. it's shared. Okay, uh, this one says, Mama, we kindly ask your guests, how do I manage jealousy in my marriage uh, on the part of my wife? Well, there's a need to ask yourself, what is precipitating the jealousy? Is she thinking that you are replacing her with a gadget? She can be jealous of that. So anytime you pick a gadget, she's sensitive. Is she jealous about a lady who is gaining all your focus and all your energies? Are you lying about a situation she has discovered several times to be true? Because oftentimes, 90 out of 100, they are right. The women tend to be right. 90 out of 100? Out of 100, I tell you, my brother. Yeah. Are they soothsayers? No women are, are not smart. Soothsayers. You see, women can foresee danger. How? One mile away. How? You, Men, put, you put one, it's two, three together. What? It's intuitive. But yeah. sometimes you, it's also logic. It's logic. You put a intuitive. few things together. Yes. And Your you know. intuition will not allow you yeah, to Yeah, because rest. I know many women get it right. It's they not it only right. in a relationship. Yeah. I mean, even at the work yeah. side or something, they can just look at you. I say, no, home foul. Yeah. And I say, baby, how? A woman, a woman can look at the configuration of a man's yeah. facial expression. They're, they're and good yeah. at that. Construe yeah. what is in there. Is it something that's innate? It's innate. Every woman has it. Men can see danger one meter away. <laughs> yeah, so we'll go falling. We the fall ditch, in. Motorway. When we fall in, then we say, hey. The like, women can see the like danger. So, friends, they are, so they are driving at 40 kilometers. I have a friend in Teshi. When we're in secondary school, we say, can Teshi my boy? Mm. He's already down. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and that's the typical man. Yes. He shows a sense of bravado. I can handle it. Yeah. <laughs> He's talking to a lady, the wife raised objection. Watch this girl, watch this girl. Her moves are suspicious. She looks so clandestine. Yo, oh, oh, this one, I can't handle it. I mean, and then one day he comes <laughs> lamenting. He has confessions to make. You yeah. know, so 
it, it's important that leadership is shared mm. and it's mutual responsibility, mutual accountability. The state where men take their shirts or jackets or blazers and walk out without telling their spouses where they are. But women ought to tell everything about where they are must mm. be stopped. Fred from Kentampo thinks that perhaps you have not experienced the kind of woman. He has. <laughs> okay, so he says that they are very arrogant, just like what we have been witnessing today. No, you see, when you say a woman is arrogant, the arrogance, my question will be, has she always been arrogant? If it is no, something has changed. Yeah, I mean, maybe the, it could the, be that the positions, she the promotions handle, at work. She doesn't know how to handle success. And you as a man has a duty to help her manage her success. That's why it's mutual responsibility, mutual accountability. But she will not go and complain to her friends that... She won't complain uh, to her friends. Now, just, you know, I got the promotion, I've got a higher pay, and then my husband is asking me to do all these things like he's trying to control me. There's a need. That's why conversations are very important. We bring clarity to our expectations. Where expectations are so high and not properly managed, people expect you to deliver what you do. You don't even have the capacity to deliver. And where it is that you don't deliver, they get disappointed with you when they have no reason to be disappointed. Mm. All right. You see, so spouses need to talk, engaging. And I'm finding people talking with all kinds of characters and individuals, except their spouses. You know, I was on radio the other day, a lady calls me and says, when I'm with my husband, we can't talk. But when we're on WhatsApp, we chat a lot. The moment we get home, we can't talk. And I'm going like, there's something wrong. It shouldn't be. It's not normal. Social media cannot replace your face-to-face -face conversation where mm -hmm. your eyeballs are looking into each other, the soulish depositions are made, and courteous words are extended to each other. You can't replace that with WhatsApp. No, 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 mm. no. Let's bring this, uh, who, who owns my body business? Well, I've already spoken about mutual responsibility, mutual accountability. So mm -hmm. the man must understand that his body belongs to his wife. Is, it, is this, this at a particular person. point no. that I own your body that, or you own my body? Unfortunately, people minimize that to sexual activity. Oh, yeah, when I need your body, you can't say no. Unfettered access. <laughs> Roll is laughing. I'm riddled. I'm riddled, you know? <laughs> you know? Did you hear that? You don't own your body. So, sure. so for every man, <laughs> yeah. I and I, I, always I, always tell, I will slap you. Bro. I always tell my male friends that if you're going to do anything with your body, go and ask your wife permission. Mm. <laughs> because, you see, we have demanded that of the women, <laughs> that your body is mine. Yeah. Your body is mine. But not for the What man. about yours? Who owns your body? Mm. Your wife does. And so she So what is it about I mean what, what is it about the body that it's you about, want to own? It's about making sure that the body is well kept. So your grooming, your hair, your clipping, your, your chin and all those things, the beard, the mustache, your wife can raise issues about those because once you step out of the home, it's a it's, it's a reflection that comes onto her. Mm. So you must be responsive to the comments and the commentary, the suggestions she's making to you, because it's for your mutual good. So it is for the man who tells his wife, Mama V, you've got to go back to the gym. He's dropped a sound bite. He's, he's lays weight content. You need to unpack it. Mm. But she looks good. Not Mama V as in Mama V uh, here. You should see her <laughs> warming herself up. Though. You know? So Some Fridays. When the husband raises that, the woman must respond. Because many women, when they marry, they settle. <laughs> and settling is dangerous. For a man, he's looking for something that you have that no other person has. So mm -hmm. if that changes? That changes, it frustrates them. I think what is also frustrating for a woman is if the husband has never complained, but suddenly he is. So you are, you are shifting focus from what he has said to you to why is he telling me this Sometimes now? It's, it's, it's a new observation, a new trend. Okay, so this is, like this is the woman thinking. Does it mean that he's seen somebody else who is not nicer, necessarily, so not he wants me to begin to look like the not person? Not necessarily. If we do that, we'll be suggesting too much. Okay, can and I ask a question? Uh, let me just say this one, and then you can ask. This young man got married to this lady three years. And then one day the lady was exiting a vehicle, her vehicle. He had parked. So when the wife was stepping in, I said, ah, 
I've not really taken notice that this is how you look. And the woman didn't find it complimentary. She felt that the guy was saying, you have changed so bad, but you need to fix some stuff. Mm. So it's also how we communicate these things to each other. Um, how does it happen that perhaps maybe you loved your woman this way, but all of a sudden now you love your, your woman in another way? You see, I don't know. love I'm that you Let me put it this way. <laughs> you used to like the... Size 12. And now you like size 60. Mm, okay, well, apart from that, you used to like the natural hair. Now the natural hair seemed to be pissing you off. You wanted to wear the extensions. And she's used to the natural hair. Hmm. That's a big one. <laughs> you know why? And at the beginning, you told her, oh, you will always be, <laughs> be loving the... I, I, I love you just the way you <laughs> are, baby. <laughs> There's a need for us to yeah, that one. There's a need for us to uh, understand that the love you experience outside marriage will be different from the love you experience in marriage. For real. For real. The person you dated won't be the person you live with. Why? Because at dating and courtship you get attracted to the good side. But when you live with them, you endure the difficult ones. The terrible. Okay. So uh, and this is where the truth is begins. Yeah. Well, John in Sunyai says, uh, good morning, please. How do I deal with nagging? She complains about things I have no idea of and it's killing me. To conclude that she's nagging means that you know what she's talking about and that you don't want to hear it repeated several times. So you conclude she's nagging. Yeah. So, now, so you pay conclude attention, that, that is nag. Pay attention to why that has become an issue for her. You see, the most dangerous thing is to ignore a woman's emotions. If you do that, she will throw you into a state we call emotional divorce. Maybe one day we'll look at emotional divorce and how it pans out. Mm. It is different from real divorce, physical divorce. But there are a lot of women who are emotionally divorced from their spouses. Because they've raised this issue, the man has become ag apprehensive about it. He's fighting those issues. And he's not admitting his faults. So the woman just folds up, mm. recoils into her shell. She will do all the regular activities she should do, but really, in her heart of heart, you are out. Mm. And that's where it matters the most. For all the things I was saying, how does our uh, tradition and practices and customs tend to, and the stereotyping that we have, tend to influence the way we view change or not change according to the things that we experience in For the For instance, the traditional man will not go into the kitchen, really. He'll mm -hmm. go and bring the game from the wild, put it there, the wife will have to fix it. He well, I, I don't go to the kitchen because I don't know how to cook. Yes, just like me. Uh, when and I, I cook, don't intend that learning how no to excuse cook. Though. When I cook, and when I cook, is, only I can no enjoy excuse. it. Yeah. Okay. That is no that's, excuse. That's, 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 I've tried this that's a very common that does excuse, not but buy it's you. no excuse. That does not buy you from going to be a support. Just a little Thank peg you. on the cheek in the kitchen. Spices, stuff. Yeah. Set oh, things in motion. But you know, that's also the time that you can also talk about the things that you want to talk about that yeah. there's no time to talk about. So just stand there and talk. Just stand that's there fine. and chat. Women like that. Mm -hmm. they, don't, they don't get apprehensive Please about tell it to them issue. again. There's a need for we the men to <laughs> understand that because the fact of you not being such a good cook or great I cook I don't understand like women. Wife, uh, women what? are difficult to understand because they are layers. They are like the bulb but what's, onion. But what's difficult about this? No, I mean, see, I'm, I'm standing in the see, kitchen cooking all by myself. It's work. I'm not to saying... To understand a woman is work. Uh -huh. That's the difficult. I'm not saying and come and be help me work. cook. I'm just saying come and stand there and chat. Thomas Edison says that um, many people see opportunity and they ignore it because it's dressed in overall and <laughs> looks a hard work. <laughs> There's opportunity smiling at you in the kitchen. You are missing <laughs> it. Because you think it's hard work. <laughs> Bro, just go there. A little spice. <laughs> you don't know how much accruals will come your way. You yeah. just have no idea. Yeah. And, and I, many I, of the times, the frustration of women starts in the kitchen. They are there alone, fuming. Look, I'm doing pepper. Yeah. I'm doing this. I'm doing. Where is he? Oh, He's sitting there watching us. Chelsea, Manchester. You know He's us. crossed his legs. He's just sitting there, cooling yeah. off, chatting on his WhatsApp uh -huh. or Facebook. Uh -huh. you know, when you do that, the woman begins to feel, ah, am I a slave? Then she also begins to conceive some weird yeah. ideas. And that will be inimical to your relationship. Thank you. Thank you. It's the same thing for the women. The man is watching his favorite sport. You come in with some big school fees matter, <laughs> <laughs> some water bill. Uh, the sewer is full. It needs to be emptied. And, you know, the man, that, 
that's, that's wrong timing. The man goes like, oh, can't you wait? And then he flares up. And he goes, oh, are you screaming at me? Are you screaming? <laughs> and then the tears begin to come. So we also have to be timeous mm. in these interventions. And it helps all of us. Okay. You won't have a perfect scenario. Let me just say this. In, there's no marriage where you have a perfect scenario. It's a lot of work, a lot of adjustments. Like work, 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 work. And people are not willing to work in marriage, but they are willing to work in flirtatious relationships. And for me, it's weird. Mm. Uh, this one says, my woman has all the physical features. Can she be taught good characters as to being a good woman? I don't know what this means. You first have to define what you mean by a good woman. And you have to identify the characteristics or the character traits you're looking for. Some character traits are formed from our childhood. Mm. And it takes time and space and respect accorded those individuals before they can modify their behavior. So those who are into behavior modification would always tell you that these things take time. They take time to develop. So you can't expect the person one day to change. I mean, Many men marry women hoping they won't change, but the women change. And many women marry men hoping the men will change. The men don't change. They get stuck to the old thing. So when you see red flags, this is the time to discuss mm. it. Not when you are married. But when you are married, the window tends to be closed a bit. Mm. All right. We, we have a little time for you to uh, also give us a call if you want to get in touch with us and contribute to the conversation. So 0302211691 one or two numbers to call. Uh, this one says, good morning, Mama V and Roland. I left town for some few days. Now I'm back. Keep on doing the good works. You guys are wonderful. Oh, definitely from Bambakia, Samed in Fumbisi. We missed you and the messages that you send us every day. Uh, but you come back to say, I like your speaker. He's on top of the issue. Marriage is different from dating. The girl you date doesn't behave the same when she gets married to you. Let's be aware of that. Bambakia, Samed you know, Fumbisi. At the, at the dating and courting level, scarecrows are minimized. They are hidden. The scarecrows surface when you marry. Mm. You know, so the things that you see, you begin to question. Was that the same woman? Was that the same man? How come I didn't see this? You know, so there's yeah. a need for us. That is why the first three years of marriage is adjustment. First three years adjustment. Adjustment. Some it extends to the first five years. Mm. So anything can happen within that. Oh, yes. That's so when you things. need to be steadfast. It rocks you. You know, it hey. hits you hard. Mm. You wake up in the morning and you just ask yourself. Well, that's ah, true. I've experienced that. It's true. I look at the best thing. You're so nice. So carry on. Everything's <laughs> good. There's a, there's a message. This one says, Mahavi, she watches uh, Priya. Is it Priya? And Kukumbagi and others. <laughs> but when I want to watch football, trouble. Uh, we've got Nancy <laughs> from Ho joining us uh, via phone now. Good morning, Nancy. Hello. Now, good morning. Good morning, Nancy. Yes, I'm enjoying your show. Thank you. <laughs> you have anything you want us to talk about? Yes. Um, the issue about the guy who called from KJB, is it Jessica or KJB, about no. who is a woman? <laughs> who is mm -hmm. a woman? <laughs> yeah. I think we have to delve into that because maybe he's into the other side, you see, so that when we concretize them, he may change. Okay. You, we uh -huh. hear. Se secondly, this issue about this uh, WhatsApp things and things, in fact, you have to write a book about that because it's, it's, it's killing my uh, marriage. Social media. Yeah. Is there a problem yes. for you? A lot. Mm. A lot. Mm. It's a problem right. so we, we hope there should be a book so that we buy. Okay. <laughs> All right, uh, Nancy. Uh, I know that you dealt with that on PM yeah, Express, yeah, but maybe AM would also have to yeah, pick it up in like the excesses, yeah, you know, the lefts, yeah. uh, the questions that are still the on people's minds. I mean, the women were asking for shared passwords. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Mr. <laughs> Haku from Boga is on the phone. Mr. Haku, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, good morning. I'm enjoying your program. We thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm also going to talk about this our social media. You see, my my wife used to play with her phone, especially on the WhatsApp, and sometimes it could bring confusion to the past. So I don't know. As as a man, you know, sometimes we also at times have programs with uh, where women play with their phones. They tend to bring suspicion. So I don't know what message should I take so that uh, I will prevent her from playing with her phone. And sometimes there are times that you tend to take the phone and uh, she, she wouldn't allow.
now you be even successful. So I, 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 I don't know. So I want Ghana to advise, or even I know women are watching, and a uh, type is there. So what mm. measures should we take so that they do not interfere between us? Thank you very much. Thank you too. Over well, to you know, you. social media and the I thought technology, it was, it, it's the only gadgets. the women who were complaining. Yeah, some, some, you'll find some isolated cases of women also getting engrossed in this because the man is not talking to her. You know, and if you're not talking to the woman, she'll find some expressions elsewhere. Mm. She gets intimate because what social media has done is touching certain parts of our brain that has lay fallow for a very long time. Mm. And so the brain has now found a new companion. And it's, it's, it's a drug to try to separate that companionship. Mm. So people are sleeping, they wake up, the first thing they pick their gadgets. Yeah. You know? That's what you do. They are driving. Le le let's it's speak it's to it's Prosper. It's, it's, it's I think we'll, let's speak to Prosper okay. and then uh, Ajay from Kumas, and then we'll, we'll leave the last few minutes for you All to right. address this issue. So Prosper from Cape Coast, good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Yes, sir. I hope you're well. Yeah, I'm doing good. I'm blessed and full of grace. And hope you are also blessed. Yeah, we are. God is amazing. Yes, we are. Let's hear what you have to say. God bless you, Roland, Mama V, and uh, Mr. Anna. Thank you. Thank really you. Well Prosper. Subject you are Thank dealing you. with. My concern is with men being lordshipping over women, not headship aspect. They are lording over women, and it makes submissive for the women very difficult. And at the same time, it, it makes them uncomfortable in the house. So most of the time, we think they don't respect. But when you go outside there to the workplace where my baby is, my baby could easily submit to the boss than the home because of the environment created at the workplace. So if we can let men understand, headship is not lordship. Hmm. That will allow women also to be submissive enough because there is no command for the woman to, to love, but the command is for the man to love. And out of the love, the woman will fall in love in addition. So if we can hammer that one for the men to at least not to lord over the woman, mm. God will bless us all and we will enjoy our marriage relationship. Thank you. Thank you, Prosper. Are, are you a counselor? You got a thumbs up. Oh, you yeah. don't have to be a counselor. Experience. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, see, Thanks a lot. It's true. Where where the man shows love, it's, it's a natural cause for the woman to respond. Mm. Mm. Let's uh, speak to Ajay. That's the last person we'll talk to. Ajay from Kumasi. Hello, good morning. Morning. I also enjoy your talk. Uh, but I have some experience that I want to share with you. Okay. Please do. Yeah. I've with my wife for almost 10 years now, and we have no child. But uh, before we got married, I already have three children, which one is uh, the best now. But what I have seen is that the rest of my two children, my wife don't even want to see them. Because she's not the one who brought them up, like the one who is with them. And I'm finding it very, very difficult uh, to even go to my wife or talk to her. Because she don't love my children. She don't like them. And you that I also, for the past six months, we, have, we are not in a good relationship. We don't sleep together, we don't talk. Because whenever one of my child comes there, there's a fight, I hope. Because of the treatment that method on, mm. on there. So but I don't know how to cope with this situation. I is, really it, is, it okay, is it okay for you to call us right after the program so that we can give your number to him? Uh, this has to be a deeper conversation. Yeah, I need some more. Yeah. Conversations on this to or be otherwise able to just hold on and, and speak to our producers uh, and then leave your number. We'll call you right back up to the show. Mm. But but in okay. this very scenario, could could it be a possibility? Um, we've been married for ten years. We don't have children. Expectations. But you've had children from a previous marriage, and so at some point when she's frustrated, and in you think you've been frustrated with this as well, but you have something to fall onto. You're giving yeah. a lot more attention, and so perhaps you're, you're eliminating the woman. Yeah, I mean, there's a need for couples who are in such situations to be considerate of each other. Mm -hmm. Sometimes a passing comment that is made, the woman can bottle it up for a very long time to come. Also, when it is you're giving too much attention to your biological children and she doesn't feel um, also receiving similar attention, then that can be problematic. 
but I don't have the specific details of this one. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't want to prefer so, any yeah. um, inputs on that. But I think that as a general precaution, when a woman has expectations of getting a child and she does not, we the men have to be great support for her. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oftentimes, you know, because he has children from previous relationship or marriage, many will look at the woman and consider her barren. But there may be other uh -huh. factors that is making compatibility a problem for them to have a, mm. a conception. So people need to also be careful with those sweeping judgments. Okay, sure. So, Ajay, I hope that you did leave your, your contacts, uh, but if you didn't, please call us right back and leave your, your number. I promise we'll give you a call and then uh, uh, hook you up. Uh, with Mr. Anan. He's fantastic, by the way. He'll help you. So it looks like social media is... It's a big one. In fact, at our conclave, it was, it was a big issue. Social we media. Had to, we had to have two sessions for that. You can easily... This is what I found out. You can be addicted to it. I mean... Take a break right now. Roland will pick his phone. It streams and naturally. Yeah, but... I, I, I try to be conscious of that. Sometimes I just put the data off. Sometimes so I'll put the entire phone ethics. off. It's uh, about ethics. But when I do that, you know what, what I do that for? I am hoping that he would get the message. I don't want to open my mouth and say it mm -hmm. and say that you two put your phone off, but I'm trying. So when I'm not doing anything, I'm not on the phone. Some don't have addiction. They have attachment. You see, mm. attachment is different from an addictive condition. So I have attachment. Some have attachment. No, 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 no. You're, let him explain, then I'll tell you where you fall. <laughs> okay, you said you have attachment. Yeah. No, 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 no. Please explain that. Let too. me find out from I you. will tell you which you see, one fits. When somebody you. has addiction, it's compulsive. Without it, they are restless. Mm. But well. when somebody has attachment, <laughs> it's just that they, they are there. If they don't have anything doing, they just pick it. It's an mm. attachment. Okay. It's not necessarily addictive. Okay. Uh -huh. So we've got to distinguish one from so the So it means that the attachment is better. For many people, you see that if you sit with them, it's an attachment rather than an addiction. addiction. Mm. Okay. Yeah. I'm attached. So if they have something else to occupy them, they, they need they somebody to engage for them. The for instance, the, the disrespectful part of the use of gadgets is when you are talking to the person and you want eye contact and they're looking on their phone. Yeah. <laughs> That's, you see, the ethics of gadgets ought to also be taught. Some people go to, to dining with it. Yeah. You know, uh, it's, it's, it's an issue. We are all sometimes at fault. But we all have to be conscious, like you said. Be, be present-minded that I'm with people and they want to talk with me. Once the gadget becomes an interfering component of our conversation, I feel disrespected. People won't say it. But they bottle yeah. these things up. So how do you send the message across? What well, do there's you do? a need to be polite and not be publicly reprimanding these people. We are quick to reprimand mm. and judge and condemn and become sarcastic in our choice of words. So I would encourage people to be more considerate when it is you want to speak about somebody you see has an attachment to their phone or to their gadget. It should be done in private, not in public. Hmm. Sometimes we throw those people to public ridicule. And then others say, ah, yeah, me too, I've noticed it. And then this one, me too, I've noticed it. Then it becomes something so else. So in the home, I mean, how do you do that? How do you tell in the your home, wife in the home, to Couples be? should be able to talk about it. And it's getting worse even with adolescent and post-adolescent young people. Hmm. They are in the same house with their parents. They are not talking. And the parents will say, oh, this is my daughter. Oh, son, he doesn't like talking. But they are busy talking on social media. That's a form of talking. So there's a need to redirect that conversational longing mm. in such person to the home. Otherwise, he will live as an alien in the house. Can you take the phone from no, your that, wife or your husband? That's a bit draconian. Can you? That's a bit draconian. I call that the Bokasa model of leadership. That's lordship. <laughs> It's lordship. <laughs> it's dictator dictatorial tendency. That's lordship. And Tell it's, it's Prosper, subjugation. We're borrowing your word. It's <laughs> subjugation. I mean, you can't put somebody in such a disconcerting situation and hope that they will be your equal spouse. I mean, it cannot be. Mm. If we are equals but different, we should celebrate the equality and the differences. You know, mm. because there are things that are similar, but there are things that are dissimilar yeah. amongst us. And wrapping up this conversation, I think we've gone into different, different yeah. areas because of the questions that we got. What would be the last thing that you want well, to do on our minds? Uh, like I said, leadership is shared. 
And submission does not mean blind obedience. Also, the body of the man, he must always remember, is for the wife. The upkeep and well-being of the man is the responsibility of the wife. So the man must be open and willing to adjust to the wife's counsel. So must the wife also be respectful and polite towards the husband, knowing that he also has a responsibility towards her mm. in the upkeep of her body. And all together, let's ensure that our commitment to our primary relationships are true and honest. Sure. Love must be sincere. If your love is artificial, is pretentious, and hypocritical, it's no love, it's mm. something else. Uh, all right, analyst from Taka, I'll end with your <laughs> message. Uh, uh, analyst says, thanks, Mark, for the question, uh, because that was exactly what I wanted to ask. Not this last question, no. <laughs> he says, I, uh, I don't feel good with long beers, and you want me to keep it for you simply because you want to play with it. How can this be possible? Romantic. I get you. Be yourself. Romantic. <laughs> <laughs> but we thank you for being here uh, today. Thank you. Uh, now that we know today, the issues, <laughs> <laughs> the next time I'll leave the two of you. Uh, yeah. That'll be no, fine. No, so I let's talk about men. Well, we'll <laughs> see how that goes. <laughs> what they about, about men? Men have issues they are not talking about. Yeah. And yeah, we don't people talk. assume we don't have... Our we don't own talk own. about issues. Ah, so what we've just talked about, is it a women's issue? No, no, I'm saying that we I'm have just real, using the real. general... We have real issues. Misconception about men. Okay, you. Yeah. They we say bear men soon because you bottle <laughs> up all your issues. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Amos Kevin and uh, thanks for being here. Uh, and he's on Adum FM, by the way. Uh, this is 8.15? Yes. Okay. 8.15. All right. Uh, Adum 106.3. So stay with us. Uh, we'll come back with we'll talk right here on the show. We thank you for your phone calls and the messages that you sent to us on WhatsApp and on Facebook as well. Keep mm. the messages, uh, the conversation going. Uh, what's the last thing that you picked from this, um, Roland? The, I, I don't have to stay a lot more on my phone. And then also, okay. I think uh, we all need to, I particularly need to make uh, w room and time for the other. Oh, yeah. oh that's, that's nice. It's, that's very educated. Anytime we touch you, I'm grateful. <laughs> <laughs> you make it is the significant You make me other. feel I'm incorrigible. No. Roland, is the significant <laughs> other. You see, a uh, uh, significant <laughs> other. And there's none like that one. <laughs> yeah, you.